Hello, we will be using Morning Setting of Daily Prayer, page 295 in the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Cycling through the Psalms, let's use Psalm 17. Hear, O Lord, my righteous plea. Listen to my cry. Give ear to my prayer. It does not rise from deceitful lips. May my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart and examine me at night, though you test me, you will find nothing. I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. As for the deeds of men, by the words of your lips, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. My steps have held to your paths, my feet have not slipped. I call on you, O God, for you will answer me. Give ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonder of your great love. You who save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assail me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. They close up their callous hearts, and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down. They now surround me, with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for prey, like a great lion crouching in cover. Rise up, O Lord, confront them, bring them down, rescue me from the wicked by your sword. O Lord, by your hand save me from such men, the men of this world whose reward is in this life. You still the hunger of those who cherish you. Their sons have plenty, and they store up wealth for their children. And I, in righteousness, I will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. text for meditation this morning is Genesis chapter 48. Sometime later, and this is uh, sometime after Jacob and the rest of Joseph's family come down to Egypt, so sometime later, Joseph was told, your father is ill. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, along with him. When Jacob was told, Your son Joseph has come to you, Israel rallied his strength and sat up on the bed. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Lutz, in the, in the land of Canaan, and there he blessed me and said to me, I am going to make you fruitful and will increase your numbers. I will make you a community of peoples, and I will give this land as an everlasting possession to your descendants after you. Now then, your two sons... Joseph, uh, Jacob speaking to Joseph. Now then, your two sons, born to you in Egypt, before I came to you here, will be reckoned as mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will be mine, just as Reuben and Simeon are mine. Any children born to you after them will be yours in the territory they inherit. They will be reckoned under the names of their brothers. As I was returning from Hanan, to my sorrow, Rachel died in the land of Canaan, while we were still on the way, a little distance from Ephrath. So I buried her there, beside the road to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. When Israel saw the sons of Joseph, he asked, Who are these? They are the sons God has given me here. Jo Joseph said to his father. Then Israel said, 
Bring them to me so I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes were failing because of old age, and he could hardly see. So Joseph brought his sons close to him, and his father kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see your face again, and now God has allowed me to see your children too. Then Joseph removed them from Israel's knees and bowed down with his face to the ground. And Joseph took both of them, Ephraim on his right toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh on his left toward Israel's right hand, and brought them close to him. But Israel reached out his right hand and put it on Ephraim's head, and though he was the younger, and crossed his arms. He put his left hand on Manasseh's head, even though Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys. May they be called by my name and the names of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and may they increase greatly upon the earth. When Joseph saw his father placing his right hand on Ephraim's head, he was displeased. So he took hold of his father's hand and and to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, No, my father, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He too will become a people, and he too will become great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his descendants will become a group of nations. He blessed them that day and said, In your name will Israel pronounce this blessing. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, I am about to die, but God will be with you and take you back to the land of your fathers and to you as one who is over your brothers. I give the ridge of land I took from the Amorites with my sword and my bow. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, Jacob is, well, he's about to die. So knowing that he's basically in the same state his father was, his father being Isaac, Jacob, also known as Israel, so if, if you got confused, Jacob, then Israel speaking and all that, yeah, is the same person. So Jacob was in the same state his father, Isaac, was. And when Isaac was advanced in years, could hardly see because of his old age, and knew he was going to die, but he wanted to pass on his blessing. Um, he gave his blessing first to Jacob. That was not Isaac's intention to give it to Jacob. Jacob, uh, due to his mother's intervention, tricked his father into giving him the blessing. But the younger son, Jacob, received the, the uh the first fruits of the blessings that God had given to Isaac. So Jacob, in recognition of this, possibly, uh, when he's old and failing and full of years, and he wants to bless his son Joseph, what he does is he blesses the younger son over the older son, in the same way that he was blessed as the younger son over his older brother Esau. But yeah, what, do, what does that really mean or po point forward to? And there's actually quite a bit to substantiate this and to basically connect it with the whole of the book of Genesis or, and even the whole of the, of the Bible. So in Genesis, you see God's promises, uh, God's works given to the firstborn, and then the firstborn loses them, and the secondborn gets it. So... There's basically never an instance in Genesis of the firstborn child receiving God's promises. There's not. Um, the closest you would get is actually Adam, because he was the first man. So he was going to receive all the promises. He had the promises in the Garden of Eden. But even so... Adam lost those promises. He was the firstborn of all mankind. 
but he lost his promises in his fall to sin. So by sinning, Adam lost his share in the Garden of Eden, and, well, because of this original sin, humanity now lives outside of the Garden, and we do not have this inheritance pro promise to give in to us. So the firstborn, Adam, uh, even though he had it, is not receiving it until after he dies, but, but I'll get to that in a, in a few minutes. So Adam lost his inheritance that was given to him as the firstborn of all, of all human beings. Uh, and then we look to the sons, his sons, Cain and Abel. Cain was presumably the older one, we don't actually know. But, uh, actually no, we, yes we do, we do know. Cain was the older one, sorry, I misspoke. So Cain was the older son and Abel was the younger. Uh, but Cain also did not receive the promises. Uh, Cain slew Abel because of his jealousy for God's favor to Abel's superior offering, and not because Abel's offering of a lamb is better than Cain's growing of the fruits of the field. God looked with favor upon Abel's offering because Abel, in faith, gave God the best he had to offer. Cain did not give the best he had to offer. He gave the second best he had to offer. So Cain gave <laughs> uh, he, he, he reserved for it, Cain reserved for himself the best that his fruits his fields had to offer and then gave God the second best. So God gave him second best <laughs> uh, gave him the second great uh, uh, blessing because Cain was only lukewarm in his relation to, relationship to God. So Cain, in his jealousy, he slew his brother Abel. Then Cain was disowned by the family and was cut off. He, he went off because he was afraid he was going to be killed by his family. Uh, God still protected him, as God still protects all, like the, the firstborn and the secondborn. But Cain basically lost the share of the promises that would be given by, to Adam, a uh, promise uh, that through Eve we would have a savior for the human race. So Cain, separating himself from that, he, if he did not turn to faith later, he and his descendants lived away from this. So actually, who received the promises given to Adam and Eve uh, following the curse that there would be someone to bruise the head of the evil serpent and drawing people into sin? Well, that would be Seth, who would, well, not the firstborn, nor the secondborn. We do not know the order of Adam and Eve's children. Uh, by tradition, Jewish tradition, there were at least 50 children of Adam and Eve. So Cain and Abel might not have been the first and the second. They might have been somewhere lower down. But we're only told about Cain, Abel, and Seth. So Seth being born much later, he actually receives the promises because he is born in the promise. He is uh, the one who will reverse the situation brought about by Cain being a murderer and falling into sin, and Abel uh, being the uh, victim of sin and, and dying. So Seth reverses that situation, Seth being a uh, prefigurement of Christ. He receives the promises not as the firstborn, but one of the secondborn. Uh, as we continue, uh, we don't know if Noah was the firstborn. There's no mention of that, so I won't uh, really go into it. Basically, within the genealogies, God, uh, sorry, within the genealogies given in Genesis, Noah is just said to be the son of his father, or Lamech. So we don't know if Noah was the firstborn or not. So unfortunately, I can't say anything one way or the other of that. But the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Yetheth. Now, Ham and his sons, they were accursed. And they were accursed because of uh, Ham acting against, basically, faith. Uh, propagating and, and making news of sin rather than uh, destroying sin, covering up sin. 
So you have Shem, Ham, Yepheth. Just want to, I'm looking at the table of, of nations here. Uh, to, uh, to Shem was actually born the Israelites, the descendants of Shem. Eventually you get down to where they need to be. Uh, so Shem was actually Actually, some actually breaks the pattern. He was, he was the first one, I believe. I would actually have to do a bit more research on this. Since I'm doing the devotions off the top of my head, I, I would need to do a bit more research to look into if Shem was actually the firstborn. I think he might have been. But through Shem, the line of Shem, came Abraham. And Abraham... Well, he was given promises by God. Uh, Abraham also might have been the firstborn, but we don't know. He's listed first in the order of the sons of his father, Terah. <clears throat> Genesis 11, verse 27, if you want to know. Um, but, yeah. Abraham, once he was married, he went up. He lived his life. Uh, God gave him promises, as we well recounted in some of the early devotions when we were going through the book of Genesis. But after Abraham, uh, Abraham had two sons. The first one, Ishmael, by his, uh, his maidservant and Hagar. So Ishmael was properly the firstborn son, but Isaac was the secondborn son and by Sarah, given to Abraham. And Isaac was the recipient of promises. Uh, Ishmael was not. Ishmael was uh, sent away. He still had some blessings given to him, but he was sent away. Isaac was the one properly given the promises of God. And then from, from Isaac, Isaac then gave the promises given to him to from Jacob for the older son, because Jacob was brothers with Esau, Esau, actually traded his birthright for a bowl of stew, which is not acting towards faith. He's not actually living according to God's will for him, and he just traded the greatest promises of the world, or basically all of creation, the greatest promises of all of creation for a bowl of stew. And yes, that is absolutely ludicrous. So Esau actually deserved to lose his inheritance, although... Uh, Jacob, arguably, was not the best recipient because he was still trying to orchestrate some trickery in order to receive these promises. Nevertheless, Jacob received these promises, and then in the line of Jacob, you have 12 sons. The greatest promises were actually not given to the firstborn of Jacob's sons. Uh, also illustrated in chapter 48, which, which I read earlier, earlier. Chapter 48 details uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, the younger one received the blessing, whereas the older did not. Uh, well, the older still received a blessing, but he was only viewed in light of his younger brother. Once we, we actually get to uh, Jacob, you find that Reuben is the firstborn. Uh, he's discounted because, well, he went in and uh, had relations with one of his father's concubines, so he's out. Simeon and Levi. Uh, this is quite quite a few chapters ago. Simeon and Levi actually uh, lied in God's name to another people so that they could mass murder them. So they're out. And then Judah is the next in line by by uh, Jacob's first wife. Judah actually receives the promises, even though he should be discounted because he went into a prostitute and conceived a child. It is actually through Judah that uh, God will reckon his, the, the kingdom in Israel. So the descendants of Judah, uh, those who will settle around Bethlehem, one of the descendants of Judah is David. And David will be the king of Israel, and God will save his people through David. 
Uh, not that David himself was one of the greatest people in the world. He, well, he was, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't the most sinless person in the world. There we go. And David still committed some very great sins. But he still received God's promises because he was where he needed to be and he lived in, in faith. Uh, he had faith given to him by God. Uh, David was actually the youngest of seven children, so he also received a blessing not meant for him. He was also not the first king. The first king, Saul, he was actually discounted because of, of his sin and his going away, away from the faith. So David, as not only the seventh son, but the second king, he properly received the promises of God. And then you can go down all the way to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being the firstborn of Mary, because she was a virgin, but Jesus Christ, uh, insofar as he is Israel, reduced to a single person, he is the second born. And we actually find this language in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where uh, the first man, Adam, going back all the way to the beginning of Genesis, uh, through him came death, through the last Adam, Jesus Christ, the second, or the second Adam, depending on how you're counting this, but second or the last Adam, Jesus Christ, the last man, uh, through him came life. So even though Adam lost his promises at the very beginning because of his fall into sin, and by him all things fell away into sin, through Jesus Christ, the second born, the second, pro the second one uh, in, in our community of faith and life, he was the one who received the promises, not as the firstborn, away at the beginning, the beginning of the creation, but as one who came much later. And because Jesus was born, uh, because of Jesus, all everyone else is now forgiven their sins. Because Jesus was born in human flesh, and he was born to the community of all human beings, all human beings can find their salvation in Jesus Christ. So the second. The second will rule the first, the second born will rule the first born, and because of him, uh, people will be saved. So when we look at the book of Genesis, including chapter 48, which we we're reading this morning, uh, with uh, Ephraim receiving the promise for, for the first born, even though he was the second born, we actually see a pointing forward to Jesus Christ, because it's not the first ones who typically receive the promise in, in, in Scripture, even though that is by law what you're supposed to do. By law, you're supposed to give your firstborn the inheritance. But because of Jesus, we do not receive the full inheritance of God promised in the Garden of Eden, but it lost because of Adam. We do not receive the promise because of the law, because by the law, we lost the promise. Adam, because he sinned, lost the promise. And the firstborn, in many instances, is following in the book of Genesis. They have lost their inheritance because of sin or, or their situation uh, being affected by sin. But it's only through God's promises that we actually receive salvation. And the promise given to us at the very beginning of creation, where or, uh, and even sinned, and God said that there will be the seed of the woman who will crush the serpent's head, crush the serpent of sin's head. We receive Jesus. So Jesus, as the child of the promise, the second born, he was the one to properly inherit the, the, inheritance, uh, the, the inheritance of the firstborn because of his relationship to God in faith. So, yes. And we see here a switchover. We can look to Jesus... We can see the pointing forward to Jesus Christ and how he comes to us so that we who have lost our inheritance, our rights, under legal obligations because we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and now do not receive his glory because of our sin, we actually can see that Jesus will give us our inheritance because he is the one who has properly received it and he is the one who graciously gives of all the blessings of God to us. So, we, li we now live in Christ, live in his church, live as the body, his body as the church, and receive the promises given to him, joining in his inheritance unto eternal life.
Amen. If that does not uh, communicate the gospel message clearly, but that Jesus Christ gives us the inheritance that we lost, I hope it was at least edifying for you to kind of go through a bit of offhand Bible study like that. We continue with the service with the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on the back cover of the hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we know that we who live in this world have lost our inheritance, lost the promise of life by the law because of our sin. Please, Lord, we ask that you look not towards our sin, but to the righteousness of Jesus Christ and his perfection under the law, that he, being the recipient of the inheritance, that he would count as co-heirs with him, that we receive everything that is promised to our Lord Jesus Christ, which was what was promised to us from the creation. Please, Lord, help us live in Christ so that we may we do your will. And help us look forward to the salvation you give to us in the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord Jesus Christ, our brother in the faith, who, who through his action saved us from sin and death, please, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you keep us in the faith, that you will help us persevere, that we make it to the end, and that we enter your kingdom as co-heirs with you. Strengthen us, we pray, and give us steadfast hope in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our only begins new, we implore you to create its beginning, to bless its, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our lives sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Raise your hands and defend myself. My body and soul of all things. Let your holy angel be with you, that the evil of God may have no power over you. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.